Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're doing another growth style effect. This time it's gonna be this organic sort of virus style growth that covers any kind of geometry that you would like. So basically this little box is the activator and I can move this anywhere and the growth will begin from that point forward until it covers the entire object. So it's entirely procedural, nothing is animated. So we can start just by creating a box in the middle of our scene here. And I kind of want it to be a cube so we can maybe do 35, 35, 35 and then hit E and just rotate it and angle it just to make it look a little bit cooler. So something like this. And then I wanna make another smaller box. So this is gonna be that activator. So we can just maybe put it on the corner here. You can hit F4 to show etched faces. And we need to give this cube more resolution. So you can just go under the modify and add a subdivide modifier. And maybe for now we can do something like one centimeter, but we're gonna raise that later on. So let's create a tie flow here, a birth surface and pick the cube. So now basically wherever there's a vertex, you're gonna get a particle created. So we can actually just select the cube and hide selection. So all we see are the particles. And now we just need to set up a few simple tests. So basically when you think about it, we're trying to tell TyFlow that whichever particles are closest to this activation point is where we want the virus growth to start. So these particles should be activated. So we're talking about distance. And whenever you're talking about distance, you can use something like a surface test operator here. And you can just pick this activator box and we can rename it, you know, activator box and set the distance to maybe five centimeters. So I'm saying that if these blue particles are within five centimeters to this activator box, then I want something else to happen. And what I want to happen is I want to give birth to the virus particles on top of the blue ones and then those particles are going to spread. So I'm actually just going to add a spawn and you can set the display to red just so we can see it pretty well and connect it to the surface test. We can see that it's working, right? Everything that's within five centimeters of this cube is being activated into red particles. And just to prove that this is working, you can go back into the surface test and raise this to 10 centimeters and more of them are gonna get activated, right? So I'm just gonna make it three for now. And now we need to set up another condition that's gonna basically tell Typhlo that all of the particles that are neighbors, that are next to the red ones should get activated as well. And that's how we get that gradual growth. So I'm gonna add a property test in here and set the type, the property test type to neighbors here. And we need to tell it to be true if it's greater than a value of zero, right? So whenever there is a neighbor, he will be activated and sent into this red event here. So now you can just connect the property test to our event two here. But as you can see, what will happen, everything will immediately turn red. And that's because the property test is looking at all of these particles and all of these particles have a neighbor. So the test is true for everything. And we only need the test to be true for the particles that fulfill this surface test that are closest to this activator box here. So we actually need to use something called the particle groups. So I'll just add a particle groups operator here into this event and set it to simulation group one. So now I'm just telling Typhlo that the particles should go and get checked with the surface test. And if they meet the surface test, then they will go into this event where they're put into simulation group one and then they spawn red particles right but the property test is checking for everything so we need to tell the property test to only check for particles in the simulation group one um, for everything to work so you can just scroll down here and say simulation group one and now basically it's just going to work from there so you can see that the property test is checking for particles in simulation group one and those are only the ones that are closest to this box now the issue that we have now is that it's very uniform and we need to make it a bit more organic and random so we can add a time test in between. Let's put it in here and let's disconnect the property test. Just delete connection and link the property test to the time test and then link the time test to this event. Um, so really all we're doing is just telling some of these particles to get sent to this red event sooner and some later. So you get some randomization. So I can set the time test to maybe a value of a three with a three frame variation just to make it faster, 
right? And here is our sort of randomized growth. And to turn it into geometry and make it look like an organic matter, let me just unhide um, the box first so we can see it. And then let's go again under standard tie flow. And we're going to use the tie measure again, which I love because I feel like you can use the tie measure for so many cool effects. And I'm just going to say pick and pick tie flow. But remember that it's going to turn everything, all of the particles into the mesh. And we only need to mesh particles that are in the simulation group one, the red ones. Right, so you can just scroll down and you can expand this too so you can see more of it and say Typho Particle Simulation Group 1. So only the red ones are now turning into our virus here, right? So already you have this sort of mesh growth and you can go under materials and I already have this green material here so you can just apply that to Tie Mesher and you can hit F4 um, to disable etched faces and then you can go under display here and just turn off display for the particles so they're not in the way we don't really need those anymore all we really care about is the time measure and the cube right so this is pretty much our effect and similar to the gold veins tutorial you can just go here under the blob mesh settings and play with it to add some detail so maybe we can make the radius something like 0.5 and then we need to add more resolution so we can do maybe mean filtering and do a voxel size of 0.5 right so that's pretty good but now the issue is that there's not enough particles being born on the surface of this cube so we need to go back into the cube for the subdivide and maybe set this to something like 0.6 which should give us a ton more resolution so now you get much nicer coverage and if I sort of scrub forward you can see we have our virus effect and if you want to control the randomness you can of course go back to the time test and set the variation lower so maybe we can just do two frames instead of three and you're going to get a much smoother edge that's pretty much it and you can just add you know a cool material to the cube so again i have the black concrete material for that you can also give it some variation so it's not perfectly smooth so you can maybe do something like 25% variation. Okay, that's too much. So maybe 10%, right? So you get some bumps and maybe we can just raise this to 0.7 to make it thicker, right? That looks pretty cool and make this cube unrenderable. So object properties make it not renderable. And I'm just going to do unhide all because I already have some lights here. Now I've explained how I do my basic rendering in the golden veins tutorial. So you can check that out. But again, I would just sort of put my camera here, hit Control C and do a test render. So this is very close to what I had for the tutorial thumbnail. You can, of course, play with the time measure settings. You can play with the material here. So I have some organic materials that I was playing with sort of to make it look like skin or something like that. As always, I would appreciate a thumbs up if you found this tutorial helpful. There are 60 plus more tutorials on the channel for both Tyflow and Phoenix FD that you can learn from. And you can download a free project file for this. It's in the description under the video. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.